Now, it was one of the worst hospital scandals in the history of the NHS. Up to 600 patients may have died because of appalling neglect at Mid Staffordshire NHS Trust. An official report on just what happened is due out in the next few weeks. But during the inquiry, those in charge at the time repeatedly denied that they knew the scale and the extent of what was happening at the hospital. Now, new evidence seen by Channel 4 News casts doubt on those denials. Our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald, is here. So, Victoria, what have you managed to find out? Well, as you said, this is considered one of the worst hospital scandals ever. And we've heard during repeated investigations and inquiries, we had the Health Care Commission uh, in, uh, investigation and then a independent inquiry which found inhumane treatment, patients left in soiled sheets of staff who showed no compassion of misdiagnoses. And we also heard of managers who were obsessed with meeting targets and with getting NHS Foundation Trust status. There was also, has also been another inquiry, the Francis Inquiry, we're waiting to hear from them. Repeatedly, though, at these inquiries and investigations, we have been told by the people who were in charge at the time in those crucial moments, 2005 to 2009, that they didn't know what was happening, what the scale was. But we have now seen data which casts serious doubt on that. It started with just one, and then there were more and more and more. Families whose loved ones had been neglected, ill-treated, who had died at Mid Staffordshire Hospital. He'd had no pain relief whatsoever after having his large bowel removed. The care was, well, it wasn't care. You wouldn't treat a dog like it. She said she's so dehydrated that the urine's coming through her skin. From 2005 to 2008, somewhere between 400 and 600 more patients than expected died at the hospital. Husbands, wives, mothers, fathers. Yet those in charge, both at Midstaffs and the West Midlands Strategic Health Authority, have repeatedly told successive inquiries that they did not know about the appalling lack of care. That may be true in some cases, but we've now been shown some documents which prove that what was happening at Mid Staffordshire Hospital had been known for years, that the warning signs were there for all to see. Too many patients were dying on those wards. So this is the, the ones with WMSHA in the thing. More than a decade ago, Professor Sir Brian Jarman, who's an international expert on hospital performance, developed an early warning system to detect unexpectedly high death rates. They're called HSMRs, Hospital Standardised Mortality Ratios, and they've been published for every trust in England annually since 2001. We were publishing the death rates, adjusted death rates, of all the hospitals every year in national newspapers. So I was asking the inquiry who would known about it, and my reply was anyone who reads national newspapers, including them. And right from the beginning, the figures showed that more Midstaff's patients were dying than would have been expected. By 2006, in fact, their death rate was 27% above the national average. My mum had so many hospital-borne infections that she has to be buried in a body bag. So the last couple of minutes I have of my mum was the memory of my mum's head protruding from a body bag. No, it didn't take anybody to know that that bed was filthy. Then she should have known that she was wanted to be cleaned. You could see by looking at her, she needed to be cleaned. I took photographs of her on the day. I mean, they're just horrendous. She just, just looks like something out of Belson. I mean, that should never happen. Yet even if those in charge did not know what was happening in the hospital or see Professor Jarman's death rate figures or read the newspapers, there was another tool right at their fingertips, a real-time mortality alert system accessible by staff at the hospital and across the West Midlands Health Authority region. When they log on, a screen comes up and it has red or green bells, which means that their mortality for this particular diagnosis or procedure is significantly high. The Health Authority told the recent Midstaff's inquiry that prior to 2008, they had not been aware of the mortality alerts. And yet, Channel 4 News can exclusively reveal that staff across the region access this data thousands of times. All the logins have been recorded, 
And so we now know that in 2006, hospital staff logged in 212 times, and the following year, 127 times. Across the Health Authority region, between 2005 and 2009, staff logged in more than 8,000 times. I actually sent letters to the chief executive of the Trust uh, from uh, July 2007 onwards, uh, pointing out that they had high death rates in certain procedures and diagnoses. So I don't think there's any possibility um, that they, they, don't, they didn't know. None of this was, of course, known at the time to the angry and grieving relatives. All they knew was that people were dying. Well, it fills my head when I think of mum, is they're suffering over those eight weeks, and that shouldn't happen. Following the death of Julie Bailey's mother in Midstaff's hospital in 2007, she set up the campaign group Cure the NHS. It wasn't long before she was joined by other families fighting to have their complaints heard. It was like banging my head up a brick wall. Nobody was listening. We were standing out on the streets of Stafford trying to raise concerns that there was something wrong. Nobody was listening to us. In fact, the high death rate published in April 2007 did, we've now learned, finally spur the hospital and health authority into action. It just wasn't action to improve the care on the wards. Instead of asking probing questions, as you might expect, those in charge did two things. Firstly, they hired some experts to challenge the figures, and then they changed the way they recorded patient deaths which had the effect of masking the terrible tragedy of what was happening at that hospital. It is true some people were sceptical about Professor Jarman's measure of mortality figures, these HSMRs, including, the inquiry heard, some academics at Birmingham University. It was these very same experts the health authority turned to to scrutinise those figures. Over that period when we were arguing about that, uh, about 11 months with this university, the observed minus expected death, the number above what you would expect, was 221 at Medstaffs. So you're saying that 221 more people died while an argument was going on over statistics? Yes, yeah, than would have been expected. It's accepted that HSMRs cannot provide a full picture of what's happening in a hospital, but expert evidence provided to the first Midstaff's inquiry concluded the academic exercise had been used to discredit them, and they said it was completely irresponsible not to have aggressively investigated further what was happening on the wards. Manjit Obrai was the doctor later appointed medical director to help turn the hospital around. I think what shocked me was the level of the care, in terms of the poor care, the, how bad it was. And even now he can't understand how all the signs could have been missed. The methodology of HSMR is well proven, it's there, it's got credibility, it's been used in all hospitals in the country, so why should stuff be any different? Our first duty of care is to start looking at alerts that are in place to say, yes, there is a concern. But after challenging the HMSRs, we have now learned the trust changed the way they recorded patient deaths, which had the effect of making their terrible statistics look better. In 2007, the trust had recorded fewer than 1% of deaths as patients expected to die. By the following year, they had dramatically increased to nearly 35%. Yet at that time, the national average was just 9%. When these patients were dying, they were arguing about the coding and so on. Really, changing the coding doesn't resurrect anybody. Those patients are dying. The Trust has always denied this coding was inaccurate. During the inquiry, those who'd been in charge at the time managed to use the word hindsight 489 times. But this rings hollow to the relatives, especially when they know the warning signs were there for all to see. What people need to realise is these are people who have suffered, these are the vulnerable. And left behind are people like myself who, who were tortured themselves just by allowing this to happen. That night before he died, 
Um, he actually was able to say he loved me. And I said the same to him. And those were our last words. Sorry. It's an incredibly shocking report. What have you managed to find out about what happens next? Well, the Francis inquiry has slipped slightly. We were expecting it to now be handed to the health secretary at the end of this month, and then we'll have to wait for a response, which could be days or weeks. This is looking at the regulatory authorities about why they didn't pick up what happened there. And we've heard something else today as well, that Monitor, one of those re regulatory authorities, has said that Mid Staffordshire is currently safe for patients to go to, but in fact it is unsustainable, its future is unsustainable and it may have to be broken up. Victoria, thank you very much. John.